Muscles are not always the prime mover. Sometimes they got some other stuff they do. So what is the prime mover? What is the definition of prime mover? I'm glad that you can read the first sentence up there. What did you guys know is the prime mover? The idea, is, I, I can write definitions all day. The idea is do you guys understand it for yourselves. What would you call the prime mover? You can use your own words. You don't need to use technical prime things. Like, it's kind of like the main, the main. usually the main thing. It's the main so thing, right? So it's like prime mover. What would, what's the main thing moving you? So Main thing. By main, what do you mean? The muscle that does what? The biggest oh, muscle does the most force. Like, like okay, so the muscle that can produce the most force for that particular joint action. For the most part, that's, that's right. All right that's, that's important to think about because it's like, how do you decide which is the prime mover? Well, generally speaking, it's probably going to be the, if it's the muscle that produces the most force, it's also going to be the muscle that's the largest. largest. For the most part, it is. It is the muscle that is largest. Sometimes it's the muscle that has the best angle. You guys get what I'm saying? Yeah, sure. That's most well aligned to produce that joint action. All right, sometimes the term agonist is used. Have you guys ever heard that? Yeah. The reason I don't like agonist is because some people use that term as prime mover, and then some people use, well, technically an agonist is anything that will do the thing you want, right? So it could be all of the muscles that cause flexion, like the graphs that we're doing, rather than the one that is able to produce the most force for flexion. So we should not worry about agonist as a terminology? Or no, you should know it in the back of your head. I'm just telling you I'm going to use prime mover so that we're clear. Yeah. So prime mover, single muscle, uh, agonist of course could be lots of muscles. But if agonist, if you, look, if you technically think about what agonist means, it could mean all. What I'm telling you guys is a lot of people will use the term agonist to mean prime mover. A lot of people use those two synonymously. I don't think the word agonist is very clear. I'm not going to use it. I'm going to use prime mover. Prime mover, muscle most responsible or that the muscle that produces the most force for the joint action we're looking at. Under load. Synergists. What is synergy? It's working together. Working together. So a synergist, you ready for this? is all the muscles that help the prime mover. Or you could think about it this way. They're all the muscles that produce the joint action we're looking at that aren't what? The, biggest. the prime mover. That's it. That's it. This isn't a memorization thing. Remember, this whole course is built around you guys not doing what? Memorizing. Rote memorization. I want you guys to understand. Antagonists. If I antagonize you, what am I doing? Yeah, trying to resist you in some way, right? Antagonists are all the muscles that oppose the prime mover and synergists. Considering this in a how are we going to figure this out sort of way, antagonists are going to be all the muscles that do what? The opposing joint action. Antagonists. You with me? So we got the prime mover, the muscle that can produce the most force. We got the synergists, all of the other muscles that produce that joint action. The antagonists, all of the muscles that produce the opposite joint action. Now we get tricky. Neutralizers. A neutralizer, a muscle that opposes the unwanted joint motions created by the prime mover and or synergists and or muscles that prevent the ancillary motion, unwanted ancillary motion in a movement. That doesn't make a whole lot of sense yet, right? OK. So let me give you an example. If I do hip extension, right? who's my primary muscle for hip extension? The glute max. The glute max does extension, though, and external rotation. But I don't want external rotation. I don't want to run like this, right? Like with my feet flipping out. So how do I prevent the external rotation? Have a strong internal rotator. I have to have my internal rotators tone up a little bit so that they keep my legs straight. That's a neutralizer. 
It's when a certain joint motion is paired with some ancillary motion we don't want. We need those other muscles to come in and keep us in a straight line. For today's class, the only part of that definition we're going to worry about is the ancillary motion of the prime mover. We're going to neutralize that. So going back to the glute max, going back to the hip extension example, forget everything else that's going on in the hip. Today we're going to say neutralizers are the muscles that will oppose the extra motion of the prime mover. You guys with me on this? The extra motion, yeah, not the main motion. Yeah, so, we, yeah, exactly. So if I'm doing hip extension and I want my glute max to fire, it's going to produce extension and external rotation. We're not opposing extension. That's fine. You're right. That would be the antagonists. But that external rotation we don't want. And remember, all your glute max knows how to do is fire. It doesn't know how to separate between extension and external rotation. What's going to control that is some neutralizers coming in to keep me in a straight line. Stabilizers. I should warn you with this definition. My definitions are not going to be the same as the definitions in every textbook. Partly because the definitions in every textbook vary wildly when you get to these more complicated terms. Also partly because I like to teach in a conceptual way. I want you guys to be able to figure this stuff out for yourselves. I've had to either scale down or modify definitions to make sure that they stay clear and conceptual and separate from each other. Stabilizers, in my book, are muscles that basically more or less control that arthrokinematic motion. They're muscles that are closer to the joint, whose main purpose is that stabilization function but the proximal stabilization function of a joint. So who are my stabilizers always going to be for any shoulder motion? Rotator cuff. Rotator cuff. You guys get me there? Fixators. Fixators are muscles that help lock down the proximal joint. Not the one we're working, but the other one. You guys get what I'm saying? Lock that one down so that I only get motion and force production where I intended. Easy example for you guys. If I'm doing hip extension, what joints need to be locked down? Uh, knee ankle. Oh. Sure, you could be right too. If I was doing something like a deadlift, sure, I might need to stabilize my knee. You're, you're not wrong, but you guys get what I'm saying there. So if I need to work my hip, I need to fixate this. Who would my stabilizers for my hip be? Deep rotators. Remember that? Remember those deep, deep, deep muscles? In a wider definition of stab, this is where. So that's a great. It's a great example, guys. That's a great example of where definitions have a tendency to do this. I said this is a fixator. The deep rotators of the hip are stabilizers for the hip. And then I said, what stabilizes? And he said, glute medius. And yesterday I said that the glute medius was the primary frontal plane stabilization mechanism of the pelvis. Yes. They're both correct. The gluteus medius has a very important stabilization function, as many muscles do. When you're breaking down stuff for this, for specific joint actions, stabilizers are the muscles that do what? Just work on those very small motions that keep the joint moving the way it's supposed to. You guys with me? Not that the gluteus medius doesn't help stabilize the pelvis in a larger, more global picture of what we're looking at. So easy to confuse fixator and stabilizer that I guarantee those two terms will never be defined the same way in two textbooks. So a fix 
fit or is it usually like small refined m muscles? Like no, no. If I was working my shoulder, what would I need to fixate to be able to move my arm well? Scapula. My scapula. So all of the muscles of my scapula become fixators. But then the stabilizer would be at the shoulder. The stabilizer would be at the shoulder, which would be my... That would be a rotator cuff. My rotator cuff. You guys kind of see how this is going? All you're doing is, is starting to understand how everything works together. I'm not saying you won't find other definitions in other textbooks, but for the assignment we're about to do, I think you'll find these definitions useful. All right, so let's do shoulder horizontal adduction. Let's see if we can figure this out. You want to do the first one together? Yes. Yes. <laughs> no, I will not think for you. <laughs> well, look, if you want to pay me my salary to follow you around and help you with your clients, we can work something out. Huh? Or I could just take your test for you. I think that's cheating. I think there's a problem with that academically. But I could be wrong. If, if you find out that I'm wrong, you let me know. OK, get back to me. All right. So let's do shoulder horizontal adduction. What movement are we talking about? So what, what exercise am I talking about? Bench press, flies, push-ups, you guys can think whatever you want. We're doing shoulder. We're just looking here though, not here. Just here in a bench press. Cool? All right. Uh, prime mover. I almost wrote agonist. Spent so much time talking about agonist, I almost wrote it down. Actually, that's not going to work. Let's do this. Prime mover. Who's the prime mover? Pectoralis major. Synergists. Uh, antagonists. Hmm? There could be if there was more than one. It's not for this case, right? You're going to see in some of our other graphs, there's a lot of muscles per category. Posterior delt. There's a reason I picked this graph to start with. Some of these graphs get very complicated. Um, who's next? Neutralizers. Neutralizers. So, we got to go back up to pec major and think, all right, my pectoralis major does more than just horizontal adduction. What else does it want to do? Internally rotate. Probably internally rotate. It actually does a few things, but we'll stick with internal rotation, right, because that's a big one. The last thing I want to do is take up a heavy bench press and internally rotate. I'm guessing that's dangerous. <laughs> guessing that's a dangerous thing to do. So, who would I use to neutralize internal rotation? Your rotator cuff. Like Which ones? The Specific. External. It external. The external rotators. So it externally rotates, very nice. It is? Infraspinatus. Terry's minor. Uh, one more. Muscles can be in two different categories. Posterior delt. Stabilizers. What's stabilizers for the shoulder? It would be rotator cuff. Yes. So it would be infraspinatus. I'm just going to write down infraspinatus and teres mitre since we already went there. Who are the other two? Subscapularis. Sub 
and supraspinatus. Fixators. Who are my fixators? Muscles that, s that stabilize the scapula. I have five muscles that cross my axial scapular joint. You guys remember what they were? Rhomboids. Middle, upper, and lower back. Trapezius. Levator scapulae. No, not the sub. No. Just muscles that move the scapula, you remember? You guys have totally forgotten your protractors. Oh, uh, pec minor. Pec minor and? Thank you. Serratus anterior. Serratus anterior may be the most important stabilizer of the scapula. Kind of interesting to think that all that's working during shoulder horizontal adduction, huh? How'd you guys do? Not bad. Horrible. All right. That's what we just did. All right, scapular protraction. Hit it. I got to go back into superstar status. We got to get this next one up, all right? You guys ready? All right, I can go on rants for forever about stuff, but we have to get this done. This one's a little tougher, right? Scapular protraction leads to a lot of really confusing little relationships. But if you put a little thought into it, you'll figure it out. Scapular protraction. Who's my primary scapular protractor? Serratus anterior. Yeah, that one's a little stronger. Serratus, I think. Honestly, guys, I'm not really worried about your the way you say it. I'll correct you if I think something will get you embarrassed in your clinic. I would never correct you. Neutral if you said neutralizers, <laughs> I'd have to go ahead and, and say something. That sounds a little bit like neutralizard, and I don't know what a neutralizard is. Uh, synergists. Pec minor. Pec minor. No. No, right. Remember, we're talking about protraction. So these muscles have to cross from axial, the rib cage, to the scapula or the spine to the scapula. Antagonists are going to be all the muscles that do what? Retraction. So what are my retractors? Rhomboids. Mid traps. Neutralizers. Well, what are we trying to neutralize? Serratus anterior does protraction and upward rotation. That's a good one too. It does you're not you're not wrong. It does posterior tipping, so we could say we need to neutralize posterior tipping, but we're going to say neutralize the upward rotation force, which means I need to find all the, move, all the muscles that do downward rotation. downward rotation. What is downward rotators? Levator scapulae. Rhomboids. Man, evidently I didn't teach this muscle very well yesterday. Pectoralis minor. All right. Stabilizers. This is a tough one with this one. This is a really tough one. 
why would the why would your uh, lower trap time be? Is that because? Uh, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of ways to think about this one. Serratus anterior is actually probably considered the primary stabilizer for your for your scapula, but it's also our prime mover. Um, if you didn't put anything down, that's okay. If you want to say lower traps, you want to say serratus anterior, I wouldn't be mad at you either because those two muscles are almost always underactive in individuals and usually need a little bit of work. Um, so we can, we can say that, serratus anterior. Oh, you're not being given charity, don't worry about it. Depends on what we're talking about, right? What if we were talking about external rotation of the shoulder? Would your stabilizers become your prime movers? Fixators. What am I trying to fixate? Wouldn't your levator be a stabilizer also? It could be. It could be. It, honestly, this, these, this term doesn't work real well for this graph. And that happens. It's okay. This is a mental exercise. The fact that it's getting you thinking is good. Fixators. What is going to need to be stable and functioning well for your scapula to move well? Spine. Your spine and trunk. Usually we move proximally, okay? Yeah, in order for your scapula to move well, all this has to be nice, right? It has to be a nice cylinder. So now all of our fixators are what? All our core muscles. Should we try to list them all? Huh? Well, yeah, I mean, we could say that too. You're right. Depending on what motion we're talking about, it could go all the way down to my toes. But let's start with core. Let's just start with the trunk muscles, right? So we said transverse abdominis. And with your transverse abdominis, we could talk about something called your intrinsic stabilization subsystem. Stay with me here, guys. Your ISS. All right. So your. Intrinsic stabilization subsystem. Your intrinsic stabilization subsystem is made up of your TVA multifidi. Tifidus, um, diaphragm, and pelvic floor. We then can add the more superficial movers on top of that, right? Which are going to be my rectus abdominis. Let's say obliques, since we know both are included. What else? Starts with an E. Erector spinae. Starts with a Q. <laughs> Quadratus lumborum. It is, it is deep, but it's still part of our core, so it's, and it's one of the bigger movers. How do we do? Am I missing anything? I think we're okay. Interior oblique what were you? Or did you In, I just wrote obliques, oh, okay. internal and external. Good. Posterior part of your pelvis is, is uh, your lats attached to. Wouldn't that play any point as well? Oh, I guess we could throw the lats up there, but that's going to get a little tricky because the lats also connect into the shoulder. And how does it affect the scapula? Guys, these are the game. The this is what I'm setting you up for is the never-ending mental game that you can play with yourself. <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead into hip extension. All right, guys, let's do hip extension. Gluteus maximus. <laughs> Gluteus maximus. Done. All right, hip extension, prime mover, glute max. 
Everybody's favorite muscle. Now let's go for the synergist stuff. <laughs> Biceps femoris. The long head, good. Getting a little bit more specific, right? The short head only goes up to about halfway up on the femur. It doesn't actually cross the hip. What else? So biceps femoris, long head. Semis. And... Posterior adductor magnus, right? AD. There's no such thing as abductors for muscles. There are muscles that abduct. There are adductors. Post adductor. Just realize if you do, you're just referring to several muscles. Antagonists. Who are my antagonists? All the muscles that do hip flexion. So, iliacus, so as, so as, rectus femoris. Keep going. TFL. Gluteus minimus. Nice. Nice. P, B, L, M, G. Anterior adductors, right? Pectineus, brevis, longus, magnus, gracilis. Anter anterior adductor magnus on that one. Neutralizers. What are we trying to neutralize? So we're trying to do, we're trying to get some internal rotation activity because my glute max wants to do extension and External rotation. All right, so who are my internal rotators? TFL, definitely. The glute min. And anterior fibers of glute medius, if you want to write it down. Although we've also talked about how the posterior fibers of gluteus medius externally rotate and are the usually ones that become underactive and the ones that I was talking about yesterday that we need to work, 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 work. TFL, glute min. Uh, what about the go -go clean? Those are which type of rotators? Oh, those are external, right? All of my adductors. We're missing some. We already have it up there, too. It's up there in a different category. It's going to be in this category, too. It does internal rotation, right? Mm hmm. Nice job. Semis. Stabilizers. I already kind of mentioned this. These are the ones that are close to the joint who are going to help us keep, yeah, the deep rotators of the hip. They are, but they're also stab they're stabilizers of the hip. Fixators. Who do we need to fixate? That's an interesting idea. So if I needed to kick a ball, would I have to fixate this side? Potentially. Potentially. If I'm just walking, though, who needs to stay pretty stable? Or if I'm running? Core. Core. Should we write down all of them again? I'm going to let you get away with core this time. Okay, let's do it. Okay, you said it. All right, so let's go. Intrinsic stabilization subsystem. What are those guys? TVA. Multifidus. Diaphragm, pelvic floor, keep going. Now we're on to our global stabilizers. 
obliques. Okay, keep going. Rectus abdominis, keep going. Erector spinae, keep going. One more. QL. Nice job, guys. That was quick, too. All right, I think we got one more joint action. Hip abduction. Let's hit it. And then you guys will be back to me talking for a little while until we get to lunch. Which movement am I looking at? Abduction. Okay, good. Prime mover. Gluteus medius, for sure. Synergists. Gluteus minimus and TFL. Antagonists. Adductors, nice job. That one's kind of easy on this one. Adductors, right? What's my acronym for adductors? And since this is the la since this is the last one, peanut butter leaves me greasy. This is the last time we're going to write the adductors up on the board. I think for this two-day workshop, let's break them out. So, what are all my adductors? You ready? Pectineus. That's the P. Peanut butter, brevis, leaves, peanut butter, leaves, longus, uh, peanut butter, leaves, me, magnus, greasy, peanut butter, leaves, me, greasy, gracilis. And then we can put post adductor here since. For most of the weekend, we've been considering peanut butter leaves me greasy as the anterior adductors. And kind of the posterior head of the adductor magnus separately. Neutralizers. This is definitely one of those graphs where one of our terms starts looking a little funny, right? Yeah, because we have posterior and anterior fibers of the gluteus medius. I mentioned that a couple times. Some internally rotate, some externally rotate. We do have two internal rotators as synergists, right? So the TFL and the gluteus minimus are both synergists and both strong internal rotators for the hip. Usually what happens is we get internally rotated by us, right? People tend to do this, that knees cave in and internally rotate, right? So if I'm just going to kind of think through logically, maybe a little beyond this assignment, we look at neutralizers and we go, well, I, what way am I neutralizing? And then I would think to myself, well, with this much of a bias towards internal rotation, I might go, I need more external rotation force, right? So we could do glute max, right, biceps femoris. TFL is an internal rotator. Um, what about my piriformis and the deep rotators, right? Oh, nice job. So as an iliacus, too. Both external rotators of the hip. Could even put down adductor magnus if you really wanted to. Whew. Yeah. Nice job. Nice job thinking through that. Stabilizers. Yeah, so this is going to be deep rotators of the hip again. And then what are my fixators going to be? Your core. Your core, just like the last graph we did. Yeah, so all I did is the, the intrinsic stabilization subsystem is those intrinsic muscles that have more of a role in stabilization than they do in movement, and then all of the other muscles that cross the lumbar spine, which are, we could look at as global movers or global stabilizers of the trunk.
Nice job, guys. You're doing a good job with this, these activities. These graphs aren't easy. Now, if you like doing these graphs, your 20 minutes a day, I wrote down one of these graphs for every joint action for every major joint, and it's up on the website. I'm talking all of the joint actions for the shoulder, the elbow, the scapula, the hip, the knee, and the ankle. It's under kinesiology. It says kinesiology of the hip, kinesiology of the ankle, kinesiology of the shoulder. So your website or the B2? B2C Fitness is the old name of the company. You guys just happen to get some old workbooks for this workshop.